How awesome. are you? <laughs> I'm doing well. Thanks. How are you? Well, thank you. Yeah. Well, congrats on your longest run ever. Is that Thanks. right? This, this past yep. weekend? Yeah. That's pretty exciting. Yeah. Yeah. It was quite the experience for sure. Uh, yeah. We got one more in three weeks. So Ooh. heal up for it. But yeah. yeah. That looked brutal. It was. Oh, it, oh, that, that um, beautiful, beautiful trail very very uh relentless it's a it's brutal it's a brutal trail i think it was like i think over the course of the 70 miles i ran i did like ten thousand feet of gain and a lot of people that have never done mountains don't know what that means exactly they know ten thousand is a large number but like ten thousand feet of climbing is like it's a lot yeah it, it, it was brutal. very intense very it was, intense. it was it was brutal i appreciate that one day you'll get to that hundred i just i just can't even fathom <laughs> <laughs> well, three well three weeks from now, I have like basically the race I'm going to be doing is like basically there is no end goal of mileage. It's just you go until you can't until you die. It. Yeah, until yeah, it's called Last Man Standing. That's literally oh, okay. called the name of the race. So my goal is to try and hit a hundred for that race. So. Wow, very cool. Yeah, but enough about me. How are you? Um, I am doing well. Um, I feel like you know, the meds are kicking in and I'm starting to feel better. Um, I had my labs run on Friday and they had come down a little bit. Like my uh, T3 had come down a couple of points, um, but not as fast as my doctor was hoping. So she upped my dosage. Mm -hmm. So I'm starting on that. Um, but I do feel like I'm feeling better. Um, Would at, you mind sending those levels to me when you get them just so I can keep track of them? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'll send those over. Um, last night I went to exercise class and actually felt strong, <laughs> which I haven't been, um, cause the tremors and stuff from the hyperthyroidism and your weak muscles, that's, yeah. that's the thing. So I was really feeling that, but then last night was the first night I, I felt like almost strong. <laughs> so that was really good. No, that is really good. Okay. So, so I was about to ask you to elaborate on, on feeling like what feeling good, what do you like elaborate on that? So workouts feel like you're, you're starting, you finally have some energy there, which is good. Yes. How's your resting heart rate? How's that going? It's, it's not going down as fast as I thought. Like when I first started on the meds, it dropped down like four or five points and then it's kind of crept back up. Gotcha. So I'm not sure what the deal is with that, but I do see my heart rate during the day, um, lower. And then when I exercise, it doesn't spike as high. So it's a lot easier to keep my heart rate down when I'm exercising. But as far as resting heart rate, it hasn't gone down as much as I'd hoped. I'm sitting at 85, I think. Um, it, it got as high as 97 at one point, but it, it was in the mid 70s before all of this. So I'm hoping that it'll start going down again. Yeah, yeah, we de we we definitely want to see that continue to come down. How's your sleep? Is that is what's your heart rate when you're sleeping? Is that is that changed at all? Um. I, I think that that's been about the same. Um, although when I'm fall, like going to sleep, I it's, um, it hasn't been as high because before it would be like over a hundred when I'm trying to fall asleep and now it's, it's not so much. So I'm not laying down, listening to my heart while I'm trying to sleep anymore. So that's good. Yeah, no, that is good. That is good. That's a huge improvement for sure. And sleep overall has been good. I've been able to sleep pretty well. Um, are you waking you know, up at night, like frequent urination or anything like that? Or are you usually once a night? That's, yeah. That's beautiful. At like three or four. Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. So I feel like that's definitely improving. Uh, when you wake up, are you feeling groggy or you're like, I'm here, I'm, I'm awake. I'm feeling a lot more awake when I get up. Like, uh, before it was like, I'd wake up and I just kind of feel like in a, in a haze for a long time, um, until I took a nap and then I'd feel better. <laughs> uh, but now I wake up and actually feel energized. Um, I haven't been needing naps during the day. Like I feel like this week I've gotten so much better. Gotcha. Good, good. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Um, okay. So let's take a look. I don't want to, as far as your training, keep lifting weights. Um, I want to see your strength continue to come up. Not going to implement any running yet right yeah, now. Yeah. It's just not what we want to do, but I'm, I'm glad to hear that the medication is being adjusted on almost a weekly basis so that we can fine tune that yeah. quickly. I think that's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, good care of me. As far as I want to talk about your food real quick. Hold on, let me just some just some things that we can like just kind of tweak a little bit. Where is the one I'm looking at right now? Here it is. Let me know. Yeah. Accept my share. There we go. Okay, okay. So on your keto, so let's look at a keto day first. So okay. as we talked about before, and everybody's where like 
you have these keto days. The keto days are meant to help with fat oxidation and just help your body stay low inflammatory. And then the carb cycling days are there to help suppress cortisol um, and just help you not overstress your body by added a, adding the stressor of consistent ketosis right now while right. we're still dealing with the hyperthyroidism and stuff. Um, as far as the keto days, everything looks really good. Um, I think yeah. your choices are great. Um, I, I have to say, as I've said before, I love on workout day seeing my products in your in your food thing. I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, um, but yeah, so great. As far as your carb days, so your 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 macro you're hitting the macros on point. I think that's great. I think something so we had sweet potato here, which was like 30 grams of carbs, which is awesome. Yep. Um, and then we had half of a sushi roll, which is 19. So that makes up about 50 grams of carbs. Um, I would like to see maybe 20 or 30 more of those coming from a, from a whole food carb source outside. Like, so, you know, more sweet potato, uh, you know, instead of having the, um, for example, instead of having, where is it? I saw it earlier. Here we go. Instead of having the almond butter keto crisp bar on a day like this, go for like a Thunderbird bar or an RX bar, something with like whole food carbohydrates that are, because what we're trying to do is we don't want to spike, like we don't want to spike your blood sugar per se, but we do want to make your body release insulin because that's what causes that cortisol suppressing effect. Like those things are correlated. That's why when, when people get really stressed, they crave candy. Like that's, that's not mm -hmm. just because candy's addictive, quote unquote. It's because there is a, there's a physiological response that your body enjoys there. Um, so we just want to do that in a healthy fa fashion. So Oh, just on your carb base, the only thing I would critique a little bit is like, instead of having like the, the, the crisp bar that has, has 14, 15 grams of carbs, but those carbs are not carbs that your body, it, it, that, that, right. They're like keto yeah, carbs. Correct. They're intentionally not trying to raise blood sugar at all. So we actually right. want something right. that will mildly do that. So, okay. um, just take advantage of those days with your carb sources. Uh, yep. outside of that though, everything else looks great. I think you're doing a great job. You're hitting your macros on point. You are a diligent student. I definitely respect that. Thank so, you. You're absolutely welcome. Um, okay. So that's good. So everything seems like it's going in the right direction. Um, we'll keep training the way it is. And then we'll just see how the next couple of weeks goes in terms of medication progression and things like that. Okay. Um, when are you going to be able, and I know we talked about, um, dealing with some of this after the hyperthyroidism issue gets fixed, but do we have a better timeline of when we're going to be able to get the rest of those numbers checked so that we have a more over oversight of what's going on? So we talked about doing that when the thyroid was leveled out. So I'm thinking, I mean, I have my next blood draw on the 19th um, to see what, where I'm at. Um, so maybe after that we can make a decision because I, yeah, I just don't want to get them checked and then have things change as I, I'm dealing with the thyroid stuff. So yeah, absolutely. No, no, I agree. I agree. I just, you know, I, I think it's just important that we have as much as the, we need to be flexible, especially as we're going through the process, just having like, even if it's like phantom timelines, just so we have, you know, just yeah. the goals are progressing and we have something that we're looking forward to. There's not like a week of stagnation at some point, if you will. Um, okay, cool. Uh, so I'm happy with everything that I'm seeing so far in terms of your nutrition and things, just a couple of tweaks that we talked about. Is there anything that you're experiencing or with, with the food or training or anything that you um, want? Oh, I was going to mention, I, so I added in the one dairy serving per day from <laughs> last week and mm -hmm. that's been going well. And I, my, um, <laughs> my, I, I was realizing that I, it's cause I've done no dairy many times. Like I was paleo way back in the day and you know, dairy's not a thing there. And um, I realized about myself is that I'm either, 100% off or I'm 100% on. Yeah. As far as dairy. So it's been a really good exercise for me to be like low dairy, like to allow it, but not to just add it to everything. So that's, I think that's been really good. No, it has been really good. That's why I didn't even, huh? I was just going to say, I don't think I have a huge problem with dairy. Like it's never caused digestive issues for me. It's not, I don't see any huge negative from it, but I do know that too much is too much. And so trying to figure out how much is not too much um, without, you know, just cutting it out completely is a really good, it's one thing I want to, I really want to do. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, I'm the same way. I have like no negative response to dairy, but it's just, I know it's hypercaloric and it's addicting and it's easy yes. to overconsume. And yes. so just managing it well. And that's why I didn't even bring it up. Cause I was actually really curious when I went into your food logs, when I got back and I, I was like, I wonder if she's going to be like, if every day we're going to see a progression of heavy, <laughs> but it didn't happen. I was like, okay, she's, she's, she's keeping it close to the chest. So that's, that's good. It. <laughs> yeah, 
that was definitely good. So yeah, no, I like that. Definitely noticed that for sure. Um, so that's good. Anything, anything like it, I, I, as far as like how I'm doing, I think, I think that's it. I did have one technical question for you though, um, about blood labs. Yep. What is the difference between free T3 and free T4 and just T3 and T4? Great question. So the best way to explain this is, is using testosterone as an example, because it's a pretty, it's an easy one. So you have total testosterone and you have free testosterone. So total testosterone is the amount of that hormone in your blood. So your T3 is the amount of that hormone in your blood, right? Free T3 is what's free to respond and react within your body, just like free testosterone, right? So you have this stuff called SHBG, which is one of the labs you'll be getting later on. It's called sex hormone binding globulin. That's what that acronym stands for. And it's this globulin that binds the hormones. It can go up with stress. It can go up because of environmental toxins. There's a lot of reasons it goes up. But it binds the hormones and it keeps them from being able to um, do their role, right? So you can have a, a decent T3 and a really, really low free T3 and have a high SHBG. And that tells us you don't have a thyroid problem. You have something that's causing your, you, maybe, maybe you need an aromatizer like uh, boron or something like that to help mm -hmm. free it up. That, that's kind of why you get all those because it helps paint a more detailed picture of like what's causing what. So like there's people that have a lot of good, a good amount of testosterone but their free testosterone is super low and they don't even know because normally they don't even get that checked because they don't know to. Um, and mm -hmm. so they're still experiencing low testosterone symptoms. Same can be backwards. Someone could have like Sean Baker has really, he doesn't have super high testosterone. It's like, it's like 280 something, mm -hmm. but his free T is like really high. So like he oh, uses cool. most of the testosterone in his body. So he, he's, he feels fine. Right. Whereas somebody mm -hmm. could have a thousand, but only have 20 free tea. And so like he has symptoms of low testosterone, even though his total is super high. Same thing with thyroid, same thing with other hormones. So, um, it's just the ones that have free, uh, um, numbers. Okay. So okay. that's basically the difference is like, that's the one that is active in your system. Okay. Yeah. Cause, um, my doctor has been testing the free T3 and T4 and I was just curious about, yeah, know. that's why. Cause that's the one that, that, that's the one that ultimately matters. Sure. Yeah. So okay. yeah. Cool. Absolutely. Yeah. Makes total sense. Well, cool. All right. So we're good. We'll just keep, uh, we'll keep in contact and then we'll come back to this next week and we'll see what we can tweak and what we can do to go forward. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Right. Yep. See ya.